Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Well, before we do get started, I do want to encourage you to support our listener support campaign, support.greatdetectives.net, and uh, you can uh, uh, send your donations into the show uh, by uh, going to support.greatdetectives.net. You can also mail me a check to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. That's uh, Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. During our listener support campaign, in addition to sending access to the premium site, which we do with all donations of $7 or more, at the $20 level, uh, we will send you your choice of seven different ebooks I've written, plus an additional thank you gift. And among the thank you gifts we do have available, at the $20 level, I'll send you my latest ebook, All I Needed to Know I Learned for, from Dragnet, in which I examine 20 life lessons that can be learned from great detectives and policemen of television, radio, and literature, including Poirot, and of course, Joe Friday. And at the $100 level, if you're in the U.S. or in Canada, I will send you your choice of the 1954 Dragnet movie, or seasons 1, 2, 3, or 4 of the 1960s series. My favorite being season 2, if you don't have that, definitely something to get. And you can support the show at support.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Dragnet. The original air date, February the 9th of 1950. The title, The Big Girl. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned to robbery detail. Sixteen persons have been robbed and beaten senseless. The victims describe the assailant as a tall, beautiful woman. Your job, stop her. Ladies and gentlemen, next week marks the beginning of National Crime Prevention Week sponsored by your local police department. These seven days are set aside to call your attention to the fact that your police officer, to better ensure the safety of your community, relies on the cooperation of the individual citizen. We feel that crime prevention should be observed not seven, but 365 days a year. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Wednesday, October 3rd. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of robbery detail. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Thad Brown, chief of detectives. My name's Friday. We were on the way over from the city hall, and it was 6.55 p.m. when we got to the county hospital, Ward 9800, room 12. This way, gentlemen. The third bed. Thank you. Here we are. Please try not to excite him, Sergeant. He's had a pretty hard time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Make your visit as brief as possible. We will. Thanks. Mr. Maloney, how are you feeling? Oh, it's so good. You fellas doctors? No, sir. Police officers. This is Sergeant Romero. My name's Friday. Robbery detail. Oh, find out anything yet? Still checking, Mr. Maloney. We'd like to have you tell us exactly what happened night before that. Well, she sure had me fool. That's all I can say. You're not the first one. Fifteen others ahead of you. Would you tell us what happened? Well, I left the shop a little after midnight, and I started to drive home on Central Avenue. You work at Maloney's Steakhouse down on South Commercial, isn't that right? 
Yes, sir. My uncle owns the place. His name's J. Brown Maloney. He knows a lot of cops. You know him? We met him this afternoon. Could you tell us what happened after you left work? Well, uh, I started to drive home out Central Avenue. I guess it must have been around 18th Street. I pu- uh, would you push that pillow up a little yes, bit? Yes, sir. I'll get it here. Oh, sir. Thanks. I pulled up for the arterial. I saw this gal standing on the corner. She was hitchhiking. Do you remember what she looked like, how she was dressed? Well, you know, kind of flashy, but nice clothes. Good-looking dame. Tall, long, blonde hair. Beautiful eyes. You're sure about the color of her hair? Yeah, it was blonde. And you offered her a ride? I didn't think there was anything wrong in it. I, I'm a married man, you know. I didn't think there was anything wrong. What happened then? Well, she got in the car and we drove off. We talked a while and she pulled a gun on me. Told me to drive up an alley. Where was that? Do you remember? Around 32nd Street. 32nd is Central. And then what? She took my wallet, watch, car keys, everything I had. Mm hmm. And she made me get out of the car. Lay down on the street. I felt to shove that gun again. Can you fix that pillow? Yeah, you bet. Just lie still. Yeah. There you are. I felt to shove that gun against me, and then she pulled the trigger, I guess. That's all I remember. You know what we call her slugging you? Must have happened after she shot me. Her face looks pretty bad, huh? You'll be all right, Mr. Maloney. You think you'd recognize the girl if you saw her again? I sure would. Nice looking, you know. Tall, blonde, beautiful shape. Doesn't figure, does it? What's that? She'd make more money on the stage than she would rolling guys like me. Must be crazy. Maybe. Would you look at these mug shots, Mr. Maloney, and see if any of these look like her? Let's see. Yeah. Uh, this one? No. How about uh, this one here? No. Let's see. No. Uh, how about this one? No, uh, she was better looking. Uh, well, here's the last one. I don't know. This might be her. The hair was fixed right. Maybe a, maybe a little more makeup. I'm not sure. All right, Mr. Maloney. Thank you. We'll be back to see you in a day or so when you're feeling better. Okay. Say, my name won't be in the papers, will it? No, sir, not unless you give it to him. I was just wondering, a wife might not understand giving a girl a ride, you know? Yes, sir, we know. Well, thank you, Mr. Maloney. We'll be checking back with you later on. Okay, officers. I hope you get a line on that dame. We're going to try. Goodbye. Sure messed up, isn't it? Yeah. That dame's got some other motive besides money. Psycho. Some kind of a sadist, maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> Find out what you wanted, Sergeant. Yes, we did. Thanks, nurse. What would the doctor say about Maloney? Is he going to be all right? Well, he had a severe beating, but he'll get over that all right. It's the bullet wound in the back. He'll recover, won't he? The bullet shattered part of the spinal cord. There was nothing the doctor could do. Yeah? Paraplegia. He'll never walk again. <laughs> We left the county hospital, went back to the office, and got out a local broadcast for the woman whose mugshot Maloney had partially identified. Her name was Beverly Allen. She had a record of three arrests and one conviction of 240 PC, assault and battery. After we checked in the office, we went across the street to the crime lab. Lee Jones had already examined the bullet taken from Maloney's spine and the cartridge casing found at the scene of the shooting. Both of them bore the same markings as those which had wounded the two previous victims. From the striations, the gun had been previously identified as a 45 Colt. Maloney's car was examined. We found nothing. We went back to the city hall and checked in at the stats office. It was 8.35 p.m. Hi, Ethel. Make that run for us, yeah? Just a minute, Sergeant. How are you coming, Ethel? Fine here. Same old run. Back seven years on this one. Yeah, that's right. Did you get any more names? No, a few. Let me check the list for you. All right. 
You wanted the names and DR numbers on Caucasian women. Five feet to five feet eight, 115 to 130 pounds, 20 to 30 years, blonde or brunette, assault and battery, M.O. Hitchhikes, rides, and robs drivers, uses gun. Yeah, that's it. Here's what the machine turned out, 19 of them. Good. Here are the names. The uh, DR numbers opposite each one. Fine. Very new name? Been more than the last time. Anything else for tonight? No, that's it for now. Thanks a lot, Ethel. Let's go. Bad start. How's that? Well, 17 of these names we checked and cleared already. And the other two? Well, one's Catherine Collins. The other one's Beverly Allen. She might tie in. We've got nothing else to go on. You want to get to the record bureau and pull the packages on these two names? Yeah, okay. I'll check robbery and see if we have any calls. Huh? All right, Joe. Okay. Hi, Captain. Any calls for us? Just one. Thad Brown wants to see you. Oh? Bad mood? Kind of. Wants me, too. Let's go. Did fellow Maloney tell you anything? Nothing that helped much. Same old story. No reports on that broadcast we put out for that Beverly Allen? Not yet. No. Are you banking on it? It's first lead in 16 nights. Hmm. Here we are. Walker, Friday, come in. How are you, boss? Sit down. Thank Take you. a look. Woman bandit gets 16th victim. Beautiful hold-up queen robs, shoots, restaurant worker. Yeah? It's on the editorial page, too. Uh, something else. Memo from the chief. Here, letter from the downtown citizens committee. Another one, civic club. They all want answers. Men are doing all they can, Chief. We got two other teams besides Friday and Romero working the case. Special squad from Metropolitan Division. They're on it, too. I don't care what we've done. We've got to do more. Sixteen nights, sixteen robberies, and three shootings. Three victims still in the hospital. When do we blow the whistle on her? We've checked out every possible lead, Chief. We've got a want out on one suspect. We're checking out another one. Talk to that man Maloney, the one she got last night. Well, what did he tell you? Well, not much more than the other 15 that she took. Descriptions still don't match in one respect. Well, how do you mean? Well, in 10 of the 16 cases we've had reported, the victims tagged the girl hitchhiker as a blonde, long hair. Four of them say she was a brunette with a short hairdo. Two of them tell us that the girl had red hair, long. She's using wigs, that's what we figured. We checked every place in town where she could have rented or bought them, no leads. Uh, what about some of the bigger supply houses uh, out of town? We've started in checking them. It'll take a little time. And you've got practically nothing on the woman. Same gun, 45 Colt. Lee Jones examined the bullet they took out of Maloney's spine. Hmm. How's he doing? Not good. The bullet smashed his spinal cord. His legs are paralyzed. When do we stop her? Yeah? Uh, Romero? Hi, Chief. Captain? What have you got? Pulled the packages on two possibles in this woman holdup thing. It's no good, Joe. Why not? What about that Allen Dane? Jail in Kansas City. I called him. Been in for a month. And the other one? Catherine Collins. I checked Seattle. Been in the hospital up there for the past three months in TB ward. Where does that leave you, Friday? Right back where we started. No leads and no suspects. All right, Walker. Starting tonight, we cover every street and alley in the central area until we get that woman. We'll order up more men and more detectives from the Metropolitan Division. Right, Chief. Get out more decoy cars. Have the area covered from sundown till sunrise until further notice. Get that woman. Right. Come on, Joe. In. Yeah. Hot shot. I get it. Shooting at Gatewood and Let's go. The name on his driver's license said William Gillespie. We found him 50 feet from the corner of Gatewood Alley and Cameron Street. His face and head bore the marks of a vicious beating. There was a single bullet wound in his left shoulder. He was conscious when we arrived. Chief of Detectives Brown, Captain Walker, and Ben checked the area for physical evidence. I spoke briefly with the victim before he was placed on a stretcher and carried to the ambulance. On the way, he lapsed into unconsciousness. I went over to where Ben was standing with Chief Brown and Captain Walker. Take a look, Joe. Captain found over there near the lamppost. Yeah. 45 shell casing, same as the others. How's Gillespie, Friday? Doc says he'll be all right. Badly beaten. Tough dame. She really works him over. wonder what makes a woman do things like this. What makes a man do it? William Gillespie was taken to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital. The shell casing, which we had found at the scene, was taken to Lee Jones at the crime lab for examination. It compared with the others. 
Jones confirmed that the markings on the bullet which had wounded Gillespie matched those on the bullet which had been taken from Maloney's bag. Both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The dragnet operation for the woman bandit went on. The men in the special detail covered every street and alley in the central area from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. the following morning. During the next five days, 11 suspects were picked up and brought in for questioning and then released after the victims failed to identify any of them. Well, at least we got her stopped temporarily. She hasn't pulled a caper for almost a week. Yeah, that doesn't bring us any closer to her. I don't know about you, but it's got me beat. Seventeen jobs, and she's as free today as she was before she started. Joe, Ben, what'd you find? Nothing. The last four women we questioned were clear. What about the other men on the case, Ed? Did they get anything? Baxter and Olson are down at the record bureau. Be in in a minute. They've been out talking to some of the victims again. Tough one. I've been thinking. How about a composite picture? We got enough to work with? Artists in the crime lab's working up a couple of sketches now. Mm -hmm. A lot of guesswork. What about the descriptions of the clothes the girl wears? Anything there we could start on? No, other than the fact that she wears flashy clothes. Hi, Olson. Hi. Any luck? Not much. None of the victims have a very good idea what the dame looked like. Tall, good-looking, nice figure, that's all. Nothing out of the ordinary, huh? Well, some of them said she had kind of an unusual voice. Soft, low. That's about all they could remember. Well, not much help. She's been described in three different outfits, is that right? Yeah, green dress with a pink coat, white dress, dark blue jacket, bright red sweater, and a brown skirt. Always carries a dark brown alligator handbag. Shoes to match, no hat. Not much of a wardrobe, is it? Maybe that's why she took up robbery. Now, look, let's get on this thing. We've been chasing this woman for almost a month now, and she's still got the run of the town. How long is it going to take us? Well, if we only had a lead that was worth something. Find it. It's there someplace. I've never reached a thief yet without digging for him. I'll get it. Robbery Olson. Yeah. Right, Andy. I'll tell him. Anderson and burglar, Joe, wants to see you and Ben. Thanks. Captain? That's all. Come on, Ben. Yeah. I'd like a day off, wouldn't you? We'll get one when we get this dame. Right, Ed. This thing isn't doing much for the skipper. It's not doing much for our time off either, is it? That fire department's got the racket. 24 hours on, 24 off. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they get three days off in a row. That's what you keep telling me. Here we are. Joe, Ben. Andy, what do you got? Checking back on a job out in Hollywood. Heard you were having troubles, came across this thing, thought it might help you out. What's that, Ann? One of the picture studios had a burglary about a month ago. Thief got in the wardrobe department, then next door in the makeup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see. Uh, here's some of the stuff taken. Dress, coat. Oh, here you can read it. Okay, thanks. Mm-hmm. Red sweater, brown skirt. Hey, look down here, Joe. Where? Right, right here. Oh, yeah. Took two makeup kits and four wigs. Two blondes, one redhead, one brunette. That's it. Any leads on this job? Not so far, no. We got one thing to go on, a single footprint, size nine. Hmm. Pretty large size for a woman. I didn't say it was a woman. Print was made by a man's shoe. You are listening to Dragnet. Authentic stories of your police force in action. One of the most popular misconceptions of the working detective as offered by the fiction writers is the picture of a man with amazing talents for detecting evidence, analyzing human behavior and motives, and then, almost as if by magic, fitting all the pieces together to form the solution of the crime. The real-life picture is a little different. The working detective has a job. In a sense, it's a practical and down-to-earth job is baking bread or practicing law. It's his job to protect citizens and apprehend criminals, and it's a job he doesn't do alone. To assist him in collecting and analyzing evidence, he has the aid of the crime laboratory. To help him identify oddities and suspects, or possible suspects, he has the record bureau, latent fingerprints, the statistician's office, the ballistics department, a battery of men and machines to aid him in reaching conclusions based on fact. Tuesday, October 9th, 9 p.m., for the past eight hours, Thaxter and Olson from robbery and Ben and I had been requesting all of the 16 victims of the woman bandit. We asked them one question. Could their assailant possibly have been a man dressed as a woman? The majority didn't think so. Those that did weren't very sure. We followed the lead through. At 9.25 p.m., we checked in and headed down the hall for the stats office. 
Do you think it was a man dressed as a woman? I don't know. One male footprint, pretty slim odds. Maybe the machines here can tell us. Hello, Sergeant. Back again, Ethel. Can you make a run for us tonight? 9.25, sure I think so. Now, here's the dope right here. I'm going to try another angle, hmm? Yeah. Let's see. Male occasions. About 5 feet 8 or 9, 130, 235 pounds, feminine features, size 9 shoe, impersonating women, robbery and assault. That's it? Mm-hmm. Arm, 45 automatic. M.O.? He hikes rides and robs drivers. How soon do you think he can have it for us? Well, you make the run on the collator. Have to punch up the master first with all this information and let the machine work the cards. I don't think I'll have it for you much before 11, that mm, all right? Fine, yeah. We'll check back a little before 11 then, huh? They'll be ready. Good. Come on, Ben. Did you call your wife after dinner? Yeah. Wish I had, and she's mad as a horny. What's the matter? Kid's having a birthday party tomorrow, and I forgot to order the cake. What's she gonna do for the party? Bake one? She have to. Then she pulled this gun on me and told me to stop the car. Well, I'm telling you, Captain, I just grabbed that gun and slapped that kid just as hard as Hold I could. Hold it just a minute, will you, please, mm-hmm. Collins? This man's name is Emil Collins. Mr. Collins, this is Sergeant Friday, Sergeant Romero. How are you? How do you do? How are you? I was just telling the captain here, I'm down here on a vacation. I'm from Sacramento, South Sacramento. And I was driving down your Figueroa Street about half an hour ago. And Picked up this girl hitching a ride, and she tried to rob me. Collins took the gun away from her, subdued the girl, and brought her in. Where is she now? Interrogation room. Thaxter and Olsen are with her. The description match? Not too close. Sounds like you didn't have too much trouble with her, Mr. Collins. Well, now that I come to think of it, maybe I didn't. When she pointed that gun, I just grabbed for it and slapped her as hard as I could. Sure took the starch out of her. Who is the girl? Any identification? None. Thaxter and Olsen haven't been able to get anything out of her. You want to try? Sure. What do you think, Skipper? You tell me. See if you can make it talk. I'll have a stenographer take Mr. Collins' report. Okay. Glad to meet you, Mr. Collins. That's a pleasure. I'm only down here for a vacation, but if you need me, just call. You bet we will. Thanks. How do you figure that one? I don't know. Let's see what the girl has to say. Olson? Joe, I want to talk to you before you go in. Sure. Did you finally get her to talk? Well, Saxter did. Pretty sure she's not the one we're after. What's her story? Said she read about this wounded bandit in the paper. Decided to try her hand at it. Needed money. Yeah. Claims her husband left her. She's pregnant. Needs the dough for a hospital. She live here? Up the coast, Monterey. Got in town four days ago, staying at the YWCA. We checked there. She's not lying. You call Monterey? Yeah, they confirmed it. She left there last Wednesday night. She's not the one. Where do we go from here? You'll take care of having her booked, huh, Olson? Yeah, as soon as we get a station. Okay, yeah, fine. Friday, Ben, this way. Hustle it. You too, Olson. What do you got, Ed? Fourth and Lucas, 211 shooting. Let's go. Any details? Yeah. A tall blonde with a gun. Come on. The woman bandit's 18th victim was a truck driver. His name, Harry Reese. His story differed a little from that of the first victim. The woman was hitchhiking near Alvarado and 3rd Street. He gave her a ride. She robbed him at gunpoint, slugged him, and then shot him through the left shoulder. He described her as tall, blonde, attractive, and well-dressed. Guess I should have known better. Remember reading about the dame in the papers. You're sure that the person who held you up was a woman? Hmm? Uh, I don't get you. What he means is you don't think it could have been a man dressed like a woman. Oh, no, I'm sure of that. No guy ever looked that good to me. All right, Mr. Reese. We'll check with you later at the hospital. Okay. We keeping that truck cleared? Yeah, Holson's got a couple of men watching it. He's going over it. Same old story. Just another version. Don't you think she's spreading it pretty thin? Her luck can't last forever. It's got me beat how she always manages to disappear without a trace. Yeah. No, Ben, this way, over here. Yeah, okay. What do you got? Better hustle it. Four blocks down on Colfax is shooting. Just came in on the car radio. Let's go. Slide over, Joe. Yeah. You hit the sign, Ben. Yeah. The crowd watching. All right, Skiba. That all that came over, Ben, a shooting? That's all they said. See the cab driver, ambulance shooting. This is working real fast. What's the address for now? Third and East Flower Hotel. Hold on. This is it coming up. Should be to the right here. Yeah, take a right. That must be it up ahead. I can't see. What's that sign say? Edgemar Hotel for Young Women. Here's a cab driver. Love it. It's right over here. 
looks like blood stains to me here all over the sidewalk. Yeah, I guess it couldn't have happened any more than five or ten minutes ago. I had this fare, see, picked her up at Fourth and Bixel, and I, I drove her here. She she paid the fare and got out. Yeah, go on. I was about halfway down the block when I heard a shout. At least it sounded like one. And when I looked back, this dame was down on one knee near the door to the hotel here, and by the time I backed up her, she was gone. And you noticed the blood, huh? I, that's right, yeah. I figured I'd better call somebody. Can you tell us what the girl looked like? Oh, not bad at all. Blonde, tall, pretty girl, nervous. But you didn't see where she went? Uh, no, but I didn't. I'll get the driver's name and address. Joe, you and Ben, see if you can follow that trail. Stuff's all over the place. Right. Over this way, Ben. Yeah. It's not hard to follow. Uh, down this alley, between the buildings. How does this figure? Uh, now, let's find out. Mm, here we go. All the way back here. You got your flashlight? Oh, yeah. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, yeah this way. Come on. Hmm. This must be the rear of the hotel. Now, well, look. The stains lead over this way to the back door here. And let, let me try. All right. Okay, inside. Still following? Yeah. Careful. Up these stairs. Yeah. Second floor. What's the matter? Did you lose him? No. Just a minute. See anything? Yeah. Stains lead on up the stairs here. Let's go. I just happened to think. This is a woman's hotel. And they ought to keep the back door closed. Come on. Third floor, let's hold it. What is it? Thought I saw a door open down the hall. See anybody? No. Let's go. This way. It's an easy trail to follow. Now, this is it. They stop here at this door. Uh, that doesn't sound like a woman. Uh, yeah. You ready? Now, try the door first. Yeah. Easy. Uh, it's locked. All right. Come on. Together uh, now. Let's hit it. Yeah. Oh. Watch it, Joe. Watch it. All right, you. Uh, uh, I got the gun. Yeah. Well, we found what we came for. Look. Still got the clothes on. Blonde wig, makeup, everything. Please help me. My leg. Call an ambulance. It's on the way. Take it easy. Have a look, Joe. The wigs, full makeup, kit, clothes, living in a woman's hotel. The worst. It was an accident. You never would have got me. I dropped the gun. It went off. You never would have got me. Yeah, that's right, mister. It was an accident. You better get the boss in here. I'll stay with Glamour Boy. Yeah, okay. And Ben. Yeah? Leave the door open, will you? House rules. The story you have just heard was true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. On January 14th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 79, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. The welfare and security of your home and your family is a subject of national importance next week, National Crime Prevention Week. The efficiency of your local police department is dependent upon your attitude toward your police officer. Not just one week out of the year, but every day in the year. He wants your cooperation. He needs your cooperation for the enforcement of your laws. Help your officer to help you to live in a peaceful, orderly community. National Crime Prevention Week costs you nothing, just your cooperation. James Harold Sutter, alias the Bandit Queen, was tried and convicted on several counts of assault with attempt to commit murder and robbery of the first degree. He was sentenced to the term prescribed by law. While serving his time in the state penitentiary, he was stabbed to death by another inmate. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice for Dragnet comes from the office of Chief of Police, W.A. Wharton, Los Angeles Police Department. Here, Morton Downey, tonight on NBC. Welcome back. The criminal sort of had a point when he said the police would never have caught him 
if he hadn't made a mistake. Um, but that is actually always how the police catch the criminals. And you can even apply it to the more fanciful shows. It's the thing they forgot, the thing they didn't plan for. Except in this criminal's uh, case, the reason that they were caught wasn't because of some subtle flaw in their plan, but because they failed to set the safety on their gun after the last encounter. Which, if you were in the 1990s, if it weren't for the brutality of the, of the criminal's crime, he prop was a prime candidate to end up on America's Dumbest Criminals. There was also a very interesting little uh, monologue from Joe Friday when he was talking about how the real working detectives, they're not someone with magical deductive powers. And that was really uh, one of the big points of Dragnet in terms of realism. The police in Dragnet are not stupid, but they're not amazing super geniuses at every aspect of detection. Ultimately, they're successful for a couple of reasons. They have a lot of resources at their uh, disposal, as we saw when they were talking to the lady who was working this uh, punch card system. They have crime lab, and they have the uh, collective knowledge, their colleagues, uh, in this whole department. That will dwarf the experience of most criminals in the commission of crimes. And this contrasts to a lot of the police uh, and crime drama programming of the previous decade or so which basically would uh, exalt police or the FBI as undefeatable, unassailable. I remember listening to an early episode of This Is Your FBI, where uh, Frank Lovejoy narrated at some length about how the FBI could simply just not be defeated. This is, uh, is something different with Dragnet. With the cases that are chosen, Dragnet says... You can uh, give the police a chase. You can elude them for a while. But ultimately, there are pathologies in the way that criminals think and act. And eventually, they will make a mistake. And the police can overlook something. Uh, for example, in this case, no one thought to call the cab companies to find out if uh, they were picking up a, a beautiful woman who matched the description after the crimes that occurred. But the criminal really has no margin for error. And it's a very uh, interesting and uh, a different take on the police for the time. Uh, Dragnet was a show, it wasn't afraid to end a story with a bit of anticlimax. Oh yeah, somebody else over uh, somewhere else, they managed to catch your suspect while you were following uh, a blonde uh, alley. Dragnet will do that at times. Because it's the exact same thing that... Uh, the police actually experience. At any rate, that's the big girl. I hope you enjoyed it. And now we turn to some listener comments and feedback, and we have a lot of thoughts on uh, the human bomb. Joan uh, e uh, emails in on this one, says, uh, Hi, Adam. It's nice to see the actors live instead of just hearing their voices on the podcast. Jack was sure young. Raymond Burr and Barton Yarborough put in good performances along with Jack Webb. Thank you for giving us a chance to watch the show. When it came out on TV, I was only seven years old, and so I wouldn't uh, remember it. Well, thanks so much, Joan. I have to say that probably the most shockingly young-looking Jack Webb I ever saw was in uh, He Walks By Night. He Walked By Night. He looks so incredibly young and so incredibly thin. Uh, then we have a comment from Leo who says, Is it me or does Raymond Burr look just like he did in Rear Window? Um, I think it's just you. Um, I can certainly, uh, seriously, I can see some similarity, Leo. And there should be a bit, since this was released a, a little bit more than two years before uh, Rear Window. The hair was a bit different, and I think the overall carriage um, that uh, Burr had in Rear Window, where he was playing this very sinister heavy, it was... Uh, a very different characterization. So I can see some similarities. I, I wouldn't say just like, so. And then we have a comment from uh, Gabe, who says, I love your podcast, and I love old-time radio, but the videos are a really nice treat. Love what you're doing. Keep up the good work, Adam. Well, thanks so much, and I uh, do appreciate your comment. Uh, also, we have uh, some thoughts on Facebook. Bobby Lee comments uh, regarding... Uh, 
This episode, I love the original so much more than the one that was on in the 60s. Well, they were certainly uh, different shows and made it a different time in uh, Jack Webb's life. And uh, Lori uh, says, this is one of my all-time favorite Dragnet episodes. And, and it is one of mine, too. Um, when I made my list of the 25 greatest Dragnet episodes uh, ever, uh, going all the way from the radio version through uh, 1970, it made the list very high. Now, there were a few episodes that topped it, but not a whole lot. It just has so much going for it with just a great amount of suspense, and all of those realistic touches just... Uh, make everything work, and you also still get a little bit of a sense of the humanity of uh, Joe Friday and the rest of the police officers at the end. And I do believe that this is one of the few radio scripts, and I think actually the only radio script they uh, reused that wasn't a Christmas uh, episode. So we'll get to hear it again. And this is a story, it just never does get old. Well, we do, did also receive a uh, comment from JZM on episode 1496, The Big Man Part 2. Uh, uh, they say, I also had to listen to this twice to make certain I heard about the personal checks. Uh, that's difficult to believe. Uh, thanks for posting these wonderful programs. They bring back such wonderful memories of family nights, sitting around the radio, uh, sadly, now, most family members are scattered in different regions. Thanks so much for the comment, uh, JZM. And I actually uh, still haven't found anyone who said that they did the personal checks thing or heard of a police department doing that. It, it's a really an odd practice. And I did have a whimsical thought when I first read your email and was thinking about it again. I was thinking, I wonder if they used the memo line uh, on the checks, and they wrote, for drug buy. I guess that would have gotten some looks at the bank. And I'm only kidding on that. Uh, I do think that one thing that has really changed in uh, recent decades is the decline of a family uh, television. And of those shows that parents and their kids uh, can watch together. I mean, that was really where it was at in the 1950s and 1960s. And somewhere along the uh, way, that whole idea pretty be has become pretty rare. You know, you see that with, you know, the streaming video services. And the only types of TV shows they release are either TVY kids shows when they do their originals, or TVMA uh, very mature adult programs. And the kids shows of today are often things that would really, really annoy parents. And if they're forced to watch it, they truly want to forget them. Whereas I think a lot of the kids' shows of yesteryear, there were some that were so well-written and interesting, they secretly enjoyed watching them with the kids. So that is definitely something that we miss these days. Thanks so much for the comment. And then we have a comment from uh, Lizzie Walker, uh, who writes in, Hi, Adam. Uh, my husband and I watched a few episodes of the new Flash television series last night. Unless I am mistaken, the police character in the show who raised Barry after the arrest of his father has a Jack Webb poster on his living room wall. The character is a no-nonsense kind of guy, so I think it go uh, it shows some insight about what motivates him. Just thought it was an interesting detail. Uh, thanks so much, Lizzie. Um, I don't watch a ton of... Um, of... Uh, of... Uh, television series um, continuing. I think I can count two. <laughs> and one of them is The Flash, and I had not noticed that detail. I guess I just wasn't expecting to see it. But that doesn't uh, surprise me at all. I like the character of Joe West, and generally the approach of The Flash. It's a very interesting uh, series, and uh, yeah, having uh, Jack Webb on the wall just makes me like the uh, character on the show even more. So thanks for sharing. Finally, we turn to a comment from Ken, uh, who shares uh, shared a little bit of uh, Stan Freeberg's uh, satire, uh, St. George and the Dragon Man, which I, I'd heard before, but I appreciate him sending it uh, along. And uh, he asked at the end, uh, on one of your upcoming podcasts, could you please go over the benefits of your app versus just getting the feed through the standard podcast app 
about it on the iPhone? Okay, well, that is a good question. Uh, I guess there would be a couple of things that I would uh, recommend about it. First is that with the app, you get uh, generally about three to four bonus episodes a month. And these are episodes, not detective shows, but usually programs in which our uh, stars of detective shows appear in other programs. And these can range from a wide variety of different uh, types of programs. We've had Jack Webb episodes of Escape. Uh, We had a Barry Sullivan episode of Family Theater this month. And uh, also just a couple days ago, Lon Clark in an episode of the 1965 ABC radio series Theater 5. So if you like some radio rarities and to hear what else uh, the stars of these shows could do, then the app is beneficial. You also have a much bigger um, archive. While it takes a while to load with 1,500 programs, you can get every program that we still have available on the site. And there is a search bar on top of the... um, on top of the list of episodes, if you scroll to the very top, there's a search box. You can type in Philip Marlowe or Nick Carter or Barry Craig and be able to load all the episodes you like. Plus, uh, you can, uh, by going into an episode and hitting the star button, automatically download episodes and save them. If, for example, you're using an iPod and you're someplace with Wi-Fi, you can download, listen to it somewhere without Wi-Fi. Uh, it's also a lot easier to uh, get interactive on the contact link. You've got Twitter, Facebook, email, and our voicemail, all uh, just a click away. And this is available in the iTunes Store and also on the Amazon Android App Store. And if anyone wants to... Complain that I did a two-minute infomercial for the app? Well, can I ask? Um, I hope, though, that is helpful, seriously. Thanks so much for uh, emailing in. All right. Well, that will do it for today. Uh, long commentary, though most of it saved for after the show, kind of makes me uh, a little nostalgic for when we started out with Dragnet, and we would always have just a really long commentary because people asked so many questions and emailed in and had so many thoughts on the show. Uh, that got me to talking and to responding. Ultimately, that's the best part of the whole show. Going back to when we started with Just Dragnet back in 2007. All right, well, that will do it for today. We will be back tomorrow with another Play It Again Adam, and I hint it'll be something sweet. And then join us next Saturday for another episode of Dragnet. Remember, support our listener support campaign, support.greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook.